Welcome grade 8. Um, to this video we are going to be looking at how we change decimals into fractions. You did this in grade 7. Um, just remember it's really important for you to know your positions of your, your different spaces. So remember that your units column is going to be over here. There's your units. Remember this is your tenths. This is your hundredths. And this is your thousand. Oh, sorry. Thousands. All right. So just so that you remember the, um, the names of your different positions. So again, let's just write this units. All right, so our first example that is in your worksheets is example one, which is 0, 0,56. All right, so it's in the table that you've got there on the first page, um, and its heading is changing from a decimal to a fraction. So 0, 0,56, we have to change that into a common fraction. All right, so when changing from decimals to fractions, it's important to look at the last decimal that you have. So we have here 0, 0,56. The sixth is in the hundredths position. All right, so the hundredths position means that we are going to have to work with a fraction over 100. So we are going to put it as 56 over 100. Now we need to simplify this fraction. So you've got to think what could go into both 56 and 100. If you can see or you're really good with your, um, your fractions and your division, then you might be able to see it a bit quicker than others. But otherwise, you can start with dividing in two, since though these are even numbers, and then trying to divide by fours, sixes, more even numbers. So let's start with dividing by two. So I'm going to divide by 2, but remember we divide by 2 top and bottom. Whatever you do to the top of the fraction, you've got to simplify at the bottom. Because 2 over 2 is actually equal to 1, so I've only divided by 1, which means I'm just changing the look of the question, but I'm not changing the value. Right, so when I look at 56 divided by 2, I get 28, and then I get 100 divided by 2 is... 50. So now we can see, let's go further. We can divide by 2 again at the top and the bottom. That's going to be 14 over 25. Now you've got to see, would you be able to work with anything um, that can go into 14 and 25? No, because the only thing that can go into 25 is 1 and 25 and 5 and 5. So 14 doesn't have those factors. So that is your final answer. So you've changed 0, 0,56 into a common fraction. For number 2 on your worksheet, it is 1.3 that we need to convert. So look at the number after the decimal place that is in the tenths region. So we are working with something over 10. So you aren't going to have just... 3 over 10, you have to have 13 over 10. It's got to be bigger than the denominator because you have a number that is bigger than 1. So in this case then, you will leave it as 13 over 10. Um, if you want to, you can change this to a mixed number. So we know that we're going to have 1 and 3 over 10. That's also suitable. But we prefer now at high school level that you leave it as an improper fraction, please. Um, rather stay away from your mixed numbers. They start to become a little bit of a problem later on in high school maths. All right. Number three from your worksheet is 0, 0,0065. So you've got to see where are we landing up here. So we have our units, 
we have our tenths, we have our hundredths, then we have our thousands. Oh, but now we are beyond this diagram over here, which means we're going into ten thousands. So you're going to put it over ten thousand. And then it's going to be your 65 over 10,000. Now you've got to think of a number that's going to be able to fit into both 65 and into, a, into 10,000. And so you're going to try and put in fives. Okay, because 65 is, ends with five. So quite likely that's the number you want to put in. So 65 divided by five is 13. And then 10,000 divided by 5 is 2,000. And that's how you have to leave your answer. All right. So then for number 4, you have been given 2,0094. So again, look where you are landing up. You are landing up. We have units. We have tenths. Hundred thousand, so we add our ten thousand. So you write all your numbers out over ten thousand. Take the decimal away. We finished with the decimal. We now on to a common fraction. So then you're working with numbers that can fit in to both top and bottom. But if you end with an even number, try working with dividing by two. So if I divide the top and the bottom by two, I'm going to get ten thousand. And 47 over 5,000. And if you look, 10,047 happens to be um, a number that doesn't share any common factors with 5,000. And the nice way to be able to check yourself is to put the original decimal into your calculators. And then it comes out with the common fraction that you need. In this case, it is an improper fraction, but we will leave it as an improper fraction. Right? If you want to change to a mixed number, you're more than welcome to, but it's really not necessary. Okay, so please let's rather keep it as an improper. For those who are desperate to use um, mixed numbers, it will be 2 and 47 over 5,000. If you don't know how we get to that, then really leave it as an improper fraction, um, not a mixed number. So then the last one that you have to do here is number 5 is 0, 0,10. 0. So this 0 here is a placeholder. So it's just sitting there. You can use it. You don't have to use it. But let's follow our same rules that we've been doing. Here's our units, here's our tenths, here's our hundredths. So let's keep it as, see what your last number is, your last digit after the decimal. It's in the hundredths, and we have 10 at the top. So, which means we are able to divide by 10 top and bottom, which means we have 1 over 10. All right, so that is your decimals to fractions. So look at what your Positioning is after the decimals. We went even up to the ten thousands. You can go up to the hundred thousands. So whatever you positioning you're working with, that's what you put in your denominator as what we call your base ten. All right, grade eight. So now a little bit harder. Um, something that you have also done in grade seven is that we're working on converting fractions into decimals. So for example. You have the fraction 3 over 4. Okay, now the easy way is you can put it in your calculator, but what if you're not allowed a calculator? You will then need to make sure that you can convert from the fraction form 3 over 4 into your decimal format. All right, so if you can do this in your head, great, but some of them get a bit tricky, so you need to follow the procedures. So in order to work with this, please show your steps because you get marks for the steps. You need to take your denominator, so the bottom of the fraction, so in this case 4, and you need to multiply it by something that is going to get you a base 10 number. So in other words, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, etc. So any number that is a power of 10. So what could we multiply 4 by to get 10? 
nothing. We can't. If we multiply by 2, we get 8. If we multiply by 3, then we get 12. So what could we multiply 4 by to get to 100? We could multiply it by 25. But in maths, we're not allowed to just multiply the bottom by something, just randomly. We've got to do the same thing to the top and to the bottom. Because then that has the effect of us multiplying by 25 over 25. And anything over itself is 1. If I had 25 sweets and I share them amongst 25 people, I give everyone 1 sweet. So it means I'm actually multiplying by 1, which means the value stays the same. So I'm changing the look of the fraction. And the fraction is going to now become 75 over 100. But 75 over 100 is the same as 3 over 4. It just looks different. Right, so then now we can use our placeholders. Remember we have our units. We have our tenths, hundredths, thousandths from the earlier part of the video. So where's my hundredths going to be? It's the second because now I have a hundred here at the bottom. So I need to make sure my seven five, my five lands up being the hundredths column number position. All right, so you have to make sure that you have the correct positioning based on your units, tenths, hundredths, thousands, remember, ten thousands, etc. So it's like undoing the previous work. So we in the previous one, we went from the decimal, we looked at the position and we went to a fraction. Now we're going from the fraction and trying to find the decimal position. So let's have a look at now the examples from the worksheet that you've been given. So it's wanting you to change for number one, you've got to change two over five. For number two, you've got to change 5 over 8. Number three, 17 over 10. Number four, negative 3 and 2 over 100. Right, so let's start with 2 over 5. What could we multiply 5 by to get a base 10 hundred thousandth? So we could multiply 5 by 2 to get 10. And we do the same thing to the top to balance it out so that we don't change the value. We keep the value. We're just changing the look of it, changing the outfit. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 2 is 10. So when we have it over 10, it means we have units, tenths, hundreds, thousands. The tens are there. So we are putting, making sure our 4 is right after our decimal and we fill in with a 0. Then for 5 over 8, now the problem is we can't multiply 8 by anything to get 10. And if you try looking at multiplying it um, to get to 100, you also don't get 100. So you have to look at 1,000. So 1,000 divided by 8 is 125. So we're going to have 5 over 8, and we're going to multiply top and bottom by 125. So we're not changing the value. We're still multiplying just by 1, 125 over 125, but it's changing the look of it. So 5 times 125 is 625, and 8 times 125 is 1,000. So you'll get to know your common numbers that they use. So like 5 goes into 10, 8 goes into 1,000. So um, there aren't many op uh, options of what they can give you as your denominators for now. So we are working in our thousands, so here's our units, our tenths, hundreds, thousands, one, two, three places. So we need to make sure that we have, after our comma, one, two, three places filled by our number at the top, and then we just fit in a zero at the front. Now the next one is quite easy because they've already done the work for us. It's 17 over 10, but just remember, that 17 is bigger than 10, so it's more than a full fraction. So this is actually a, representing a mixed number, but that's fine. You still do the same process, except we don't need to change our base to a 10, but we need to know we have units, then tenths, hundreds, thousands. 
So we need to make sure that of our two numbers that we have here at the top, right, we need to be in the first decimal place. So we just put the decimal there. So it's 1, 7. So 1, 7 because then we are in our tenths because we are at the, we are working over 10. Another way to look at it is if you like mixed numbers, 17 over 10 is the same as 1 and 7 over 10. So you know it's going to be 1 comma and then you work with 7 over 10 is your 7 in the tenths place. But it's really not necessary to do that extra step. All we need to see is that your final decimal is in the tenth position and so you put your comma so that your digits land in the correct positioning. All right, then for the last one, we have a mixed number, so we first have to work with it um, preferably as an improper fraction. So I'm just also going to revise how we change to improper fractions here. We first multiply the denominator across. That makes it negative 300. It's on the side here. And so you multiply and then you add. So it's going to be negative 302. You keep the same denominator. All right, so again, if you want to work in mixed number form, that's fine. But I just want to practice working in our proper, um, well, our improper and common fraction notation. So now we have 100, 100 at the bottom. So we have units, tenths, hundredths. So of our three numbers at the top, there are three numbers. We need to make sure we land up in the hundredths situation. So we can have two numbers after the decimal. So one, two numbers after the decimal. So it has to be negative 3,02 as our final answer. Right, now you can work on the activity that has been shown to you in your worksheets. It's exercise 14.1. And in exercise 14.1, you are going to be practicing converting from decimals to fractions and from fractions to decimals. So use these examples to help you and um, use the worksheets um, as reference for you to be able to fill in.